Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. A couple of weeks ago, you might have seen me trying out my brand new favourite mould from Buan Nicole. I absolutely loved it. It was an architectural mould and it was one of a set of three. And in that video, I said I was going to treat myself to the other two. Well, they've arrived and today I'm going to be trying them out. Wait until you see the finished results. Wow, I think you're going to love them. I know I do. I will be using aqua cast in them to make three beautiful candle vessels. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. To find out how much water and aqua cast I would need for each mould, I filled each mould with water whilst weighing it at the same time. Then I went to the aqua cast page on the Elichem website and used their free online calculator to input the volume in grams and then it automatically tells you how much water and how much powder you will need. So I made a note in my notebook for each of my different moulds so life became a lot easier. If you want your solution to be a little bit thinner, you can add more water or less powder. You don't have to stick to the exact measurements, it's just a guideline. I like to put my water into my silicon mixing cup first and then add the powder into the water. That's just the way I prefer to do it. After weighing out all the powder, I gave it a really good mix. If you're mixing up a lot of Aquacast, I would recommend adding the powder a little bit at a time. But this isn't too much, so I just added it all in at once. And yeah, that's just gave it a good mix. And it mixes very, very quickly and easily. So that's another great thing about Aquacast. Next it was time to add the pigments and I like to use pigments from Homeware Design Co on Etsy and they're specifically for eco resins and they work so well. This colour is called Avo which I think is short for avocado. You might have seen me use it a lot in other videos because it is one of my favourites and yeah it's just a case of mixing it in and there we go it looks lovely. And now it's time to start filling the moulds. I like to fill them just a little bit at a time because there's so much detail on these architectural moulds, especially the handle on the lid. There's a lot of detail in there and I always like to make sure there's no little pockets of air or bubbles trapped in there. I also like to use a little micro brush just to rub it around the sides of the mould to make sure that everything's covered and that helps a lot as well. So I'm going to speed this up now because I did spend a lot of time filling the lid and the main part of the mould. That's another great thing with Aquacast, you can take your time. You don't have to worry about it starting to set before you've finished. I would say you have about 15 minutes of working time, which is really plenty of time to get your mould filled and to give it a good bash about like I'm doing here. So yeah, it's really good with the timings. So as I mentioned in the introduction, these moulds are from Buan Nicole. They've got such a wonderful range of moulds which are designed and made in-house. They're so unique and different. I just really like the range that they've got there. They're also high quality. They're made of platinum silicon and they're in generous proportions as well. They're not thin walled, they're nice and thick and strong. But they're supple as well, so when it comes to demoulding them, because it's soft and supple, it peels off the finished piece nice and easily so that's another reason why I like them plus they ship all over the world free shipping which is wonderful and the same with Aquacast as well Aquacast has free standard shipping so both the things I'm using today offer free shipping which is excellent 
Right, now I'm going to show you a bit of an experiment that I had with my second one. Now, I buy my Aquacast in big buckets because it works out a lot cheaper to get the really big buckets. So I've had the bucket I got for a long time. And what I do is I put it into that smaller bucket that you can see there. Every now and again, I fill it up from the really big bucket and it makes it easier to handle. But because I've had it so long and I've opened the big bucket so many times, the moisture from the air has got in there and caused one or two lumps. It's not a big problem. As you saw, I've already um, mixed one without filtering it or anything like that and just taken one or two lumps out that just rise to the top. The lumps always come to the top so you can just fish them out if you get any. Um, but this, you know, this is just a thing if you're getting the really big tubs, I think. You shouldn't really have a problem. But anyway, because I was getting a few little lumps, I decided to try getting the lumps out with the foot of a pair of old tights. So I just took my scissors and cut about the bottom eight inches, I would say, off the bottom of the leg. So I've got the foot part there. Do make sure you haven't got any holes in the um, toes of your tights. <laughs> but yeah, the, the tights didn't have any holes in. Uh, yeah, definitely don't use fishnets. <laughs> they won't work either. <laughs> Anyway, as you can see, I've just put it up the foot of the tights over another silicon jug, just kind of hooked it over the edges and I'm just using it like a filter and just I poured all my aquacast in there and then it was a bit messy, that's why I've got gloves on. I gave it a took it off, I unhooked it round the edges and gave it all a good squeeze and most of it came out. I found that there was quite a lot of hard stuff left. Um, yeah, so when you're mixing up your Aquacast, if you're going to try filtering it like this, get mix up some extra because I ended up not having quite enough. I'd measured out exactly the right amount before deciding to do this. And so I lost some and ended up having to mix up some more to do the lid separately. Um, but yeah, it worked really well. It got rid of the, any lumps that were in there. And you'll see when this one is demolded that it's got a smoother look to it. So yeah, I was quite happy with the results, even though it was a bit of a, you know, it was a bit of a messy process. But, you know, we like getting messy, don't we? I do anyway. <laughs> Anyway, let's get it into the mould. This time I used Vivid Orange from Homeware Design. And you can see how smooth it is this time, can't you? Really, really smooth. And you might be thinking, well, that's not Vivid Orange, that's yellow. Well, yeah, that's why I used Vivid Orange, because if you use just a little bit of it, you get a lovely warm yellow. And it was warm yellow that I was after. So yeah, I was really happy with that shade. And you you wait till you see this one out of the mould. I was so excited when I demoulded this one. So that's that one. Let me just show you the third one and then we'll be able to get on to the demoulding, which I know we're all waiting for. Right, for my third one, I went with Duck Egg Blue, which is another beautiful colour. You don't need much of this one. It's quite a vibrant colour and I wanted to go with a pastel effect for all of these. So I just added a little bit and then poured it in and did all the same stuff as I did with all the others. And yeah, there's not much more. <laughs> That can tell you really just the same thing again and again. Lots of bashing, lots of table banging to make sure all the bubbles, all lumps rise to the surface. And then it's just a case of leaving it for about an hour and then it will be time for demolding. But luckily for you, with the magic of video editing, you don't need to wait an hour because here it is. Let's start with the avocado green one, which is the one that I love because of the steps that go all around the sides. Wait till you see this one. So as you can see, you just peel back the mould with the palms of your hands. It's quite easy. And then when you've turned it kind of completely inside out, you just give it a squeeze to release the vacuum effect on the inside of the pot that you get. And once you let the air into there, it comes out okay. So come on, let's get this out. 
And there we are. How cool is that? I love those steps going all the way up around the outside. Isn't that different? It's really cool and unique and I just love everything about it. Let's have a look at the lid. With all three moulds in this set, each lid has a different building on the top as a handle. Isn't that cute? I really like that. I will show you them all a lot more closely soon because they need to be sealed, yeah? And once they're sealed, it changes them again. So, yeah, we'll have another look soon. Let's look at the other two jars. Right then, this one is my new favourite mould. The blue one was the one I already had, which you will see next, and that was my favourite mould <laughs> until I got these two extra ones, and now this is my new favourite mould. <laughs> I absolutely love the design of this one. And this is the one where I filtered the Aquacast, so keep your eye out for the difference that you might see in the finish because I think it looks a little bit different. See what you think. Come on, Lou, get it out the mould. There it goes. So let's have a look. Look at that. Look at that detail in there. Oh, I absolutely love this one. And when I get the wax on it soon, the colour will be a lot more vibrant as well. So we'll do that next when we've got the blue one out of the mould. But yeah, Beautiful. Let's get the lid out. I love the shape of the building on the top of this lid. I think that's really good. I like that a lot. don't know if you can tell, but the lid is paler than the body of the jar. And that's because, I don't know if you remember me saying, I had to remix some more Aquacast to do the lid. And when you do that, it's always hard to make you sure you've got the right amount of pigment. I didn't quite get enough, but I got away with it. It doesn't look too different. Right, let's have a look at the blue one. Right, with this one, something happened which will be useful for you to know, actually. It's good that you can learn from my mistakes. The body of the pot was fine, not too bad at all, and I love the colour. Beautiful design again. But with the lid, what happened was I washed this mould before using it and it hadn't dried properly. There was a few little kind of wet patches on the inside of the lid mould and I'd thought oh it'll be fine you mix aquacast with water it's got water in it a bit of water in the mould won't matter will it well, that's what I thought to myself um well let's see the what happened to the surface of the lid and when you see that you'll see it's because of the wet patches that were on the mould do you see those dark patches that's what happens if you don't you know, dry your mould after washing it. Um, it kind of gets disguised when I put the wax on soon. But yeah, always dry your moulds. The wax I like to use is Clark's Stone and Concrete Wax. And I use a microfiber cloth for it and just rub it on. And as you can see straight away, do you see how much darker and vibrant the colours become as soon as you add the wax? I just wanted to show you the difference that it makes and so it's a really nice way of protecting the aquacast and it gives it a soft sheen without making it shiny and it's definitely my preferred method of sealing aquacast. You can use the Hydroflow Sealer which is from Elichem Resins, that's what they recommend for sealing aquacast, especially if it's going outside, four or five coats of the Hydroflow Sealer for something that's always going to be outside is essential, but for inside things, I like to use wax. And for the really detailed areas, I've got this big soft brush that I keep with my wax and I only use it for wax and it gets into all the nooks and crannies. So yeah, that really helps a lot. Right then, now the sealed, let's have a look at the finished candle vessels. Right, first we have the green one, all nice and vibrant now, it's been waxed, love that one to bits, it's very elegant and simple but really unique at the same time. And my duck egg blue one, very nice, love that one too, but my absolute favourite of course is my yellow one and look how much smoother that looks as well. 
that's the one where I filtered the Aquacast. So I'm going to try that technique again, I think, because I think it looks really good. Right, let's light the candle and look at them all together. The flame will look quite big at first because it's a brand new wick. I double wicked it. I use wooden wicks in my candles and I used a double one. And um, at first the flame does go quite high. And because it's moving around as well, that's made it wobble around more. So yeah, <laughs> don't be disturbed by the flame. It's normal. But look at them all. What a lovely set, aren't they? I'm so glad I decided to purchase the other two from the set of three because I think they all look so good together. So in the video description, you will find links and discount codes for Aquacast and for these moulds as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.